One favor at a time of my choosing, where you harm no one. In return, I tell you what I know. Do we have a deal? Weeks after the finale of Has Been Hotel have left fans speculating about what comes next for Charlie, her allies, and her enemies. In a fictional world rich with lore and intricate details, most fan discussions center around the characters and what's next for them in future episodes. In season one, we meet countless powerful characters, including several overlords. These elite demons made their place in hell by collecting souls through contracts. The selling and dealing of souls behave like an economy, with the more souls owned contributing to a demon's power. In this video, we're discussing which characters Characters could own souls and the unique ways they use them. She still owns her soul. He gave me info that can save the hotel, but we're going to need help. Number one, Rosie. One of the overlords who attends Carmilla's meeting in Scrambled Eggs, fans of Hasbin Hotel were thrilled when her character received a more prominent role in the episode named after her, Hello Rosie. A close friend of Alistair's, many wouldn't expect her to be so pleasant, but she's a pleasure to have on screen, especially when she gives Charlie the advice she needs to overcome her struggles. With her smile and witty remarks, Rosie is easily the most easygoing character. The warm reception she received from fans made her a favorite in the fandom. However, even her fame can't overshadow the fact that she's a demon with significant power. Rosie is the overlord who oversees Cannibal Town, a section of hell occupied by the underworld's cannibals. The residents there share Rosie's same aesthetic and smiling face, but they're all bloodthirsty and eager to fight when promised a proper meal. When Alistair and Charlie arrive in Cannibal Town, they find Rosie taking requests from her people, promising to help a woman with her husband. It doesn't seem like a deal or contract-making exchange. Interestingly, she makes Charlie convince the cannibals to aid her through a speech rather than commanding them to fight. We know from an interaction with Alistair that Rosie keeps up with potential deals that seem promising. She offers information to Alistair about one when he arrives, but he declines her offer in favor of asking for her help against the extermination. Rosie may deal with the people in Cannibal Town without infringing on their free will, as Alistair does with Husk and Nifty. However, as an overlord, Rosie must have a collection of souls under her name. She may be a kinder overlord who allows her people to live and let live. In the second season, we'll likely see more of Rosie and how her lenient approach to leadership keeps her town running smoothly. I tell you what, you bring old, tall, dark, and armless to me, and I'll straighten him right out, okay, sweetie? Number two, Carmilla. One of the respected overlords we meet in Hasbin Hotel, Carmilla, has the ear of her peers. When she calls for a meeting in Scrambled Eggs, many overlords arrive to discuss the extermination crisis and the sharp decline of souls. While she argues with Velvet, Carmilla continues to demand respect for herself and the other overlords before calling the meeting off. However, Carmilla doesn't appear as power-hungry as others in her position. While the Vs have placed themselves in the spotlight, Carmilla prefers to keep to herself. Carmilla doesn't roam the streets looking for contracts. Instead, she makes a profit as an arms dealer who sells angelic weapons to the masses. In Hello, Rosie, she reveals that her ballet shoes were made of the weapon's material, giving her an inconspicuous weapon against the angels. Her sharp shoes, like blades, allowed her to kill an exorcist who threatened her daughters. Carmilla values her family above all else. She confides in Zestiel, claiming she never wanted wanted blood on her hands and killed the angel out of necessity. She also wants to avoid a war, believing that the resulting danger could put her two daughters at risk. While most overlords make deals to control others, Carmilla may have made deals with Odette and Clara to keep them safe. With their souls bound to their mother, they can't become locked in contracts with other demons. It would also explain why they run a family business, with Carmilla's daughters acting as willing assistants. Welcome, Hell Sovereign Overlords. I've invited you all here because you represent the controlling powers of our city. Number three. Husk. When Husk enters the series in the pilot, it's as an unwilling participant in the Hasbin Hotel. Due to his contract with Alistair, he must work as Charlie's bartender. Subsequently, he becomes the shoulder everyone leans on when their inhibitions are low. Husk can understand Angel Dust's struggles, which leads to him looking out for and confiding in his fellow sinner in the episode Masquerade. When Angel struggles to cope with the abuse Valentino puts him through, Husk sympathizes by explaining his contract with Alistair. Surprisingly, Husk was once an overlord. He claims that gambling with souls is dangerous because one move can cause someone to lose everything. However, Husk didn't see the trouble brewing until it was too late. During the song Loser Baby, Husk mentions that he sold his soul to save his power. Overlords become more powerful and more influential with each soul they own. Husk may have kept a few of his previous contacts by giving his soul to Alistair. Husk may not want to call on lesser demons under his control because he's working at the Hasbin Hotel. Demons can cut deals and lock within themselves. Alistair is the most prominent example of this phenomenon. He uses numerous contracts in the first season despite someone else owning his soul. The construction and film crews were from the demons he's contracted with. However, he's also under a contract that restricts his freedom. Husk could be in the same situation as Alistair, and in season two, he could use his remaining contracts when he's in a pinch. But when you're dealing in souls, while also being a gambler, 
The stakes are pretty high. Number 4. Lucifer Throughout the first season, we receive many different examples of overlords. The reserved demons, like Carmilla and Zestiel, like doing things a certain way. Alistair, meanwhile, maintains a carefree attitude and topples his enemies to stay on top. As the most influential sinners in Hell deal souls, it would make sense for the King of Hell to have a few contracts of his own. While many respect Lucifer for his pure angelic power in history, he could go far with the greedier demons by working as they do. While Lucifer seems to have the same moral standings as his daughter, he's the leader of the Seven Deadly Sins, a group of the most formidable demons in Hell who help him run the Seven Rings. A handful of the deadly sins appear in Hell of a Boss, some more agreeable in personality than others. Since the infrastructure and economy in Hell depend on using souls, Lucifer would likely amass wealth in making similar deals as the Overlords. Although Charlie and Lucifer make recurring appearances throughout the series, we don't see what their lives as world are like. During Dad Beat Dad, we witness Lucifer's desolate workshop, where he's completely alone. The Morningstar family may not keep employees to help handle their daily affairs. However, anyone who has worked for the King and Queen of Hell may have done so with contractual obligations. Dad, look at this lovely parlor where people can get to know each other and share secrets and stories and intimate feelings. Number 5. Loot while it's commonplace for demons to make dealings using each other's souls, the concept likely isn't practiced in heaven. In the episode Welcome to Heaven, we glimpse at how angels live each day and how they view themselves. In their eyes, they're perfect and virtuous who pride themselves on their peaceful lives. However, many shady businesses occur in heaven, as Sarah condones and allows Adam to execute his exterminations. It seems that heaven's higher powers aren't as self-righteous as they claim, which explains why Sarah faces Emily's anger when she learns the truth during the council. Adam is another angel partaking in secret deals. After his death in the show must go on, Loot approaches Lilith in what appears to be heaven, claiming the deal her late commander had with Lilith was now over. We don't learn the details or circumstances of Adam's deal, but as the new leader of the exorcists, Loot offers to honor it as long as Lilith intervenes with the Hasbin Hotel. Demons make deals by giving and taking souls, with signed contracts that outline the details. Originally from Hell, Lilith may have made a similar contract with Adam. It seems wrong for angels to have a monopoly on souls. If their souls belong to humans from heaven, then there wouldn't be much for them to make deals about because heaven is supposedly perfect. However, Adam may have deals with other demons in hell, from overlords to royalty. If he did have a collection of souls, then Loot may inherit them with her promotion. If you want to stay here, you're going down there and stopping that. You understand? Lilith. In a world built by the deals made, hell wouldn't be the same if demons weren't binding one another to unbreakable contracts. The method of owning and trading souls is a testament to the noteworthy power used by the overlords. While we don't know how these contracts will continue to influence the story of Hasbin Hotel, there's no denying that they're the backbone of what helped build the underworld and the demons who rule it. I didn't even know that was possible. If you did, would you have told me? Charlie! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. Come on! It'll be easy. I'm sure you can handle this. Yeah. Um, sure. I can handle this. No problem.